Hello everyone, my name is Marcella Dominguez and I welcome you back to another episode of the AM Show. Today I bring you an Amazon seller who is going to share with you valuable tips and information and resources about how he grew his Amazon uh, seller store. So I want to introduce you to Eric. This is the AM Show with Arts Music Lawyer, where ambition and motivation meet persistence and drive, where your wildest dreams come true and even the greatest possibilities become realities. Listen to people just like you who stay authentic to who they are and master the art of their craft. Are you sharing the art of you? The art of you is music to my ears. Stay focused, stay on track. Create a new lifestyle with ambition and motivation. The AM Show. This episode is sponsored by the law firm of Marcella Dominguez. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or artist looking to protect your brand, then Marcella is right for you. Marcella has worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs like authors, clothing brands, Amazon sellers, consultants, and entertainers. Protecting your brand does not have to be tough. Let Marcella save your brand before your business name or slogan gets pulled out from under you. Go to MarcellaTM.com to learn more. Eric, say hello and introduce yourself. Hello. hello. I'm Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone uh, your experience on Amazon and how you started. Well, uh, I, I started right out of my home, actually. Uh, uh, had a situation that some, some job changes came along and, um, you know, I got to where I, it just, my job was not working out for me the way I wanted it to. It was a good job, but uh, it was requiring me to relocate. And I didn't want to do that. So I just took a leap of faith and uh, left the job and, uh, uh, had some free time on my hands and decided I was going to clean up the garage and get rid of some stuff. And I was going to throw away a bunch of things. And I had this idea, well, what if I just stick them up on eBay and see what happens, you know? And uh, I, uh, to my surprise, everything I stuck up, old junky car parts and things like that, they all sold very quickly uh, at, at a price that seemed uh, surprisingly high. And so, uh, uh, you know, just right away, I said, well, I wonder if I can grow this into a business, some kind of a feasible business model. And, and so that's, what I, that's where I started putting my energy and uh, just began building it out and building it out. And within about a year, uh, you know, I was, uh, I had guys working at my house and we were, we had 18 wheelers coming by uh, picking up freight. And so uh, finally, after about two years, I grew out of uh, the house or actually the neighbors were going to probably throw me out of the neighborhood uh, because of all the uh, commercial vehicle traffic. So I had to give me a warehouse and, uh, you know, that was a good move actually because it allowed me to even grow further. And so uh, moved into the warehouse and uh, now we're actually starting to outgrow the warehouse, uh, believe it or not. So. <laughs> Um, we may have to actually look at uh, expanding that further. So, so yeah, that, that's where we're at. I want to give people a means for comparison. So, you know, at the peak of your job that you left and to where you are now, do you mind sharing numbers with people? Uh, what kind of, like earnings or what? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I, I had a job where I probably made, uh, you know, just shy of 100K a year. And uh, after taxes and, you know, every, all the deductions and everything, it was probably more like about $60,000 a year, you know. So uh, it was kind of, uh, and I really didn't have any upward mobility at that job. So uh, not that I could see. So that's another reason why I didn't really want to invest a whole lot into staying with the company uh, there. And uh, so I, I just decided I need, I need you know, something new, something, something different. And uh, so, you know, now, now I feel like I've won the lottery or something just because it's, uh, uh, you know, the, my lifestyle has drastically changed and, um, and, you know, and my, my financial resources are way different than they used to be. I used to have a budget and now I, you know, don't really have to worry so much about finances. Although I don't spend like a, a drunken sailor or anything in my personal life. I put most of my money back into my business. That's kind of what's allowed me to continue to, to, to grow. Uh, so I'm not living high on the hog. Uh, most of my money goes back into my business. So tell people roughly where you are now. Well, uh, you know, as far as numbers goes, um, you know, I can, I'll just say probably, you know, four to five times what I was, you know, what, what my previous financial resource picture was looking like, uh, right. at, at least. Yeah. 
Now, the reason I wanted to ask you that is not because I'm interested in being nosy and prodding, but because for so many people selling on the Amazon platform, even when you're starting out on eBay, um, you know, as small as you did out of your garage, some people find your journey unrealistic. It will never happen to me. It's impossible. How did he do it? I don't know how to do it. When you started, you didn't know what you were doing either, right? I, I did not, you know, uh, I, I do have a business background, but you know, uh, it was more so in the corporate world. I think what, uh, what drove me was the fact that, uh, first of all, I had no job, I had no income. So this was, you know, this was my job and it was a very important situation, you know, to take care of my kids. And, and, uh, so I put all of my energy into a day and night. I mean, I, I would I would lay in bed till uh, two or three in the morning watching YouTube videos because I never even knew what Amazon FBA was. Never heard of it. First time I heard of it, I'd already been selling on eBay for seven or eight months, uh, and uh, you know I, I stumbled across a video where people were talking about Amazon FBA, and I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. Mm -hmm. So started watching videos. So so in the daytime, I would work on you know selling product and sourcing product. Uh, and then at night I would lay in bed for two or three hours on my mobile phone watching, you know, educating myself on this business. And I did that seven days a week for, you know, a good two years straight, you know, maybe longer. I mean, I still do it to this day to some extent. In but So I had to put a lot of energy into it. It was uh, a lot of work. So in what year did, did you start working on Amazon? Uh, I started working in Amazon about, uh, uh, probably about January of 2015. That's when I started uh, actively pursuing Amazon's uh, selling. And when you started in 2015, how long did it take for you to finally reach a place where you thought, okay, I'm supplementing the, my previous income. I should be okay because it only goes up from here. Well, the first thing is I, 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 I had some goals in my mind. I had some anchors in my mind that told me, look, don't expect to make any money uh, out of this endeavor for the first year. You know, plan to operate, find some other way to pay the bills uh, and get by. I just, I just had realistic expectations. Uh, I had low expectations or, you know, that I was not going to make any profit for at least a year. And I said, if I don't see any upside after a year of doing this, then I would bail out and go back to work in a traditional corporate job. Uh, but to my surprise, you know, the, uh, even the first year, and, and I was doing okay with eBay too. I mean, eBay still was was uh, feasible. Well, I did I did shut it down and only recently started it back up, and it's actually doing well. Um, but uh, you know, I, I had realistic expectations not to take any money out. But after about a year, I looked at it and I said, you know, I I think the first from twenty in twenty fifteen, I think I had about four hundred fifty thousand dollars in gross sales and. At that point, I every day I'd get up and ask myself, "Does this look like it's going to pan out?" And all the indications said yes. Every day I said, so "This is going to pan out." You know, this is a after a year of this, we've got some pretty good revenue, and I'm just working out of my house as one person. I started hiring some people to come in and help me out on the side, mm -hmm. uh, just shipping product. You know, some friends, some family uh, would come over and help me out. Uh, and in exchange, I would kind of teach them a little bit about what I'm doing. And they, they started playing around with it and supplementing their income as well. And so we just kind of helped one another out. So ever since then, I've always, I've always helped people, uh, you know, get, help them with selling on Amazon or, or any kind of e-commerce. I share a lot of information that I know because they always come back and uh, I, I see, it always seems to pay me back just having that philosophy. I'm not, I don't hold secrets or anything like that. Some things I have to keep to myself, but I tend to help a lot of other people. So there's a lot of other people that are also doing the same thing because I've kind of coached them along. So on that note, because I know that people are listening are probably wondering, well, how did he start? What are the biggest um, tips that I need to know? What, what advice would you give them? Where do they start? Three actionable tips for beginners. Well, the first thing is you got to have something to sell. Uh, and that, to me, that was the hardest thing. I couldn't find anything to sell. I, I mean, I had to start experimenting with things. And uh, so uh, after I sold all the stuff in my garage, right away, I started having an idea uh, about stuff that sells good, you know. Uh, so then I started 
uh, going out to garage sales and just just buying junk, you know, putting it up, see what I could find, what would sell. And uh, I spent, you know, uh, quite a while doing that uh, from probably 2014 to 2015. That was my see what sells uh, days right there. And ever since then to this day, I'm still selling products that I discovered back when I was just buying things from garage sales and thrift stores. And when I did find something that I found sell really well, I would go put up uh, uh, ads on Craigslist uh, and saying, hey, I buy this stuff, you know. And believe it or not, people would call me and say, hey, I'll sell it to you, you know, ship it to you or buy it locally or whatever. And then from there, uh, I said, well, if this stuff sells so good, why can't I uh, either go have it reproduced uh, or, or get with, a, uh, you know, a wholesale supplier, a wholesale distributor or a factory that's already selling it. So that, then those would be the, the avenues that I would pursue to try to find a steady, uh, uh, you know, supply chain for that product. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing I can tell you right there all these uh, g whiz gimmicks and fancy tricks uh, ranking and all that stuff is much less important than finding a good product that you can sell at a profit um you know and i i i recommend that uh you stay away from the glamour uh products and when i say glamour products i mean things that are in really high demand things that are uh, saturated with sellers on amazon it's just really hard to, to make any money there you need to go find less popular products that have a higher profit margin um, and that, you know, not everybody's clamoring to get uh, because that, that's where you can make, make some money. And so you have to get out there. You have to experiment. Don't be afraid to go buy something off Amazon or, or in a store and stick it up on Amazon and see how it sells. Go buy it off eBay. Go buy it. Go pay full, full retail price. I mean, if you're going to set yourself up a business, uh, these are business expenses anyway that you can write off. So, Mm -hmm. I buy samples all the time and stick them up here, there, uh, uh, test it. Sometimes they're unbranded things. I may, you know, put that up with a little uh, fictitious brand name or something like that that I just stick up there. And uh, if there's no sales, okay, I know that's maybe not so great. If there are sales, I, I know, hey, maybe we're onto something. Let's pursue it a little more. So I'd say some experimentation, um, and that's a good a good place to start. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah. So I think you give a lot of tips there. One is to make sure you have something to sell. Two, make sure that it's not a product um, that is already being sold by thousands of Amazon sellers. Um, and three, maybe test. test yeah, your do some test sales and, and, and realize that that is not uh, my universal maxim. I found exceptions to all of those rules um, because Maybe I can, maybe I have access to something that is really popular, but I, I can get it. You know, if I have some kind of a competitive advantage on that product, by all means, leverage that competitive advantage and jump out there. Uh, and so I, I have done that in the past. Sometimes I find products that I like products uh, that are being sold that the uh, competing Amazon sellers are not sophisticated. Those are areas where I like to come in and then, you know, they're just, uh, I'll give you an example of something, uh, um, not that I'm recommending this product, but let's say it's car audio product, for example, mm -hmm. or uh, automotive parts or something like that. Something where the, the Amazon sellers tend to be, you know, uh, brick and mortar businesses, but then they kind of do it, uh, some Amazon selling or online selling out the back door on the side. Well, those people tend to not be completely focused on their Amazon sales. So they don't use all of the, uh, tips and tricks and techniques to kind of, uh, you know, get a leg up on the competition. Those are areas where uh, you can, you know, you might have some success and I have had some success and I've had some failures too. You know, I got into sports and fitness and I, I spent a lot of time developing wonderful products, uh, great packaging, great marketing, great branding. Uh, and I just got out there and couldn't, you know, the only way I could sell was at, at break even and I just wasn't making any money. So yeah. I just couldn't compete. Let me stop you there because I think that's really important. Do you think that it was a flop because it was the wrong product that you chose? What did you, what went wrong? What did you do wrong in that process? Well, I didn't have any, first of all, it was a saturated market and I didn't have any competitive advantage. So you can't just go in there thinking because, uh, you know, I'd, I'd watch some, some uh, videos on YouTube about how to rank products. Well, you know, I was going into a market that was just 
saturated with very sophisticated sellers, much more sophisticated than I. Uh, so, and so I couldn't compete on that level. Um, and even though I had a great product, uh, you know, I just, I just couldn't, just couldn't compete. Uh, so I didn't have any competitive advantage. So you, if you're going to get into a market like that, have some competitive advantage that you can leverage, um, you know, because you're, you're going up against brands that have already been out there, been selling on Amazon, got 12,000 reviews on their listings. You're going in with uh, what zero, you know? So even if, even if I get 500 reviews, I can't get anywhere close to, I'm, I mean, it's just natural. People come into Amazon and they say, well, here's two nice looking products for the same price. Do I buy the one that has uh, 15,000 four and a half star reviews or do I buy the one that has 15 reviews, you know? Uh, and so it's just really hard to get, you know, I, I just found it very hard to compete in that regard. Sometimes you can just because you have low review count doesn't mean people won't buy it. Uh, but uh, it was the pricing mainly. I couldn't, you have to be able to compete on the price so it's better to find uh, products that are not, you know, where you don't have three or four or 500 sellers out there uh, doing private label selling, including Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I just stay away from that. So. so once, okay, let's say you think that you've nailed down your product, you put it up on Amazon or you ship it into Amazon. Um, then what, what do you do? Do you just wait for sales? I kind of have a checklist of, of things, you know, it's almost like a little project. You could put together a Gantt chart, say, here's all these things that have to be done uh, to finally get your uh, listing optimized and, and, and uh, you know, cultivated to where it's going to do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, you need photos. I would say, don't, be, don't try to make everything perfect to begin with. Try to get stuff up there. Even if you only have one bad photo, it's better than nothing. You might get some sales, um, but do have like some guidelines. Always have at least seven photos. Like I say always have a minimum of seven photos. Write some decent copy. Uh, make sure that those things are there. Um, you know, make sure that you can get in. If your stuff starts to sell and you can't get inventory, you got a problem. You know, you put all this time into it. Uh, so you'll need to keep an eye on that and make sure you can get the inventory. Um, Thinking what else? Uh, you need to have good customer service. Customer service is really important. You have to be willing to, I, I call it give until it hurts to your customers. Um, be willing to give them a full refund, you know, uh, if they're not happy. Have a 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. Even when you think you're being uh, taken advantage of by the customer, uh, give them the money anyway. You got to go into this thing thinking, look, I'm not here to make any money. I'm here to serve my customers. And if you have that, that mindset going into it, that's when the success comes back to you. Uh, and, and so you have to make your customers happy. Occasionally, you're always going to have a customer that is unreasonable or takes advantage of you. And I still struggle with that from time to time. But typically, um, our philosophy is 100% customer satisfaction guarantee mm -hmm. uh, up to a certain dollar amount. You know, we'll just give them a refund if they're not happy. And then find out what made them not happy and fix it. Usually I'm finding it can be fixed. It's usually because of a misunderstanding. You have over promised, either you've over promised in your listing or you haven't provided them enough information uh, and delivered it to them in a way that they can interpret it to have realistic expectations of what the product is. Uh, somebody, if you, if you paint this beautiful picture and show you know, uh, overly done photos uh, of a product, I'll give you an example. I bought something the other day yeah, they had this beautifully polished chrome item. I get this rusty looking piece of junk. Uh, and so right away, I got a problem. You know, uh, this is not what I ordered. Uh, they have, they had uh, photoshopped those pictures and made them look like, made it, uh, you know, embellish the product and made it unrealistic. So those guys are going to have problems. Make it realistic. I, I wanted to tell them, hey, why don't you take a picture of the old rusty item so we know what we're going to get. Right. And then the other thing is make sure that whatever the product is, I like package inserts. You don't have to do them right away, but keep in mind, if you have package inserts, it's another way to communicate with your customer. Here's how to get a hold of us if you have any problems whatsoever. Communicating with your customer is really, really important. Uh, it's better to over communicate than to under communicate. And so if you can have some automated messaging going out to that customer, that's a big help. You wanna tell them, thank you for buying my product. It's being prepared and we'll, we'll ship shortly. Uh, if you have any problems, here's how to get a hold of me, by the way. 
uh, you know, the next message should come out and say, your, your product is in route. Just want to let you know, we think it's going to show up about this time. And then when it delivers, you should have another message. Hey, your product's delivering. By the way, don't forget, if you have any questions or problems, here's how to get a hold of me. Oh, and by the way, attached is the user's manual for it. If you'd like to look it over uh, before you have a chance to actually open the box. Uh, and then finally, once you've provided them all of this service, um, that's a good time to say, hey, you know, if you're happy with everything you've got, would you mind leaving us a product review? Here's a link to the product review, um, you know, because a lot of people would like to know your experience and so would we. Uh, so those are kind of, those are really good uh, techniques, uh, you know, to stop the negative feedbacks and to make sure that you get five-star reviews. And then and make sure you have a good package insert. Make sure you have good instructions uh, inside. I, I launched out a product recently that was almost bombed and we saved it because uh, we found out that our instructions were not really adequate. They weren't telling people how to operate the product properly and they were damaging it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I ended up doing, I got some one star reviews and that's a kiss of death right there. If you have a brand new product and you got first reviews of one star, you're done. I just deleted the entire SKU off, completely off of Amazon and started a brand new one. And, uh, you know, then we, we created some videos on, on how to, you know, set up the product. And we provided links in the videos and the package inserts and through a, you know, and, and we notified them that, hey, this, you know, we've got a, I, I think we started sending the, uh, attaching the uh, uh, instruction manual and the automated messages. And, that, and now we got five-star reviews. It solved that problem. So uh, we saved it and it's turned out to be a good product. So you mentioned a lot of automation. In, in everything you just described, you know, like saying, do you have any questions? How can I help you? Now that it's done, leave a review. I mean, those are a lot of man hours and I'm sure there's a lot of um, automation that goes into it. Can you tell us like some of your favorite resources that you've used in your Amazon journey? Well, uh, you know, these are, uh, there's third party apps out there that, that will automate that messaging process for you. So you need to reach out to them. Uh, I started using Feedback Genius, and then I migrated to another platform. Uh, uh, I think it was called uh, uh, Help Desk by Excelco or something like that. That that uh, they can they can actually because the messages can get to be a lot. You know, we had started we started uh, exceeding ten thousand messages a month, and I just outgrew that platform and had to go to another yeah. platform because every single sale, if you're sending out you know five or six messages per sale. Uh, it, it adds up to a lot. Um, Great. Also, um, so that's a resource. I, I got a customer service person to help me. Uh, she's in the Philippines. I found her on Upwork, and I've been using her for years uh, now. And she's trained. She knows all of our products. You know, you kind of have to, you got to teach them how to, you know, the right way to handle things. Uh, and so they, they do a good job for you. It takes a lot of mentoring and a lot of time spent. So I had to invest a lot of time in her. But now she takes, she answers all the email messages and I have to really struggle to get hands off and let her do her job and not get involved. But uh, when, you know, as long as I train her correctly and explain the products to her correctly so she knows what to tell the customers and I say, hey, anytime there's a problem, the benefit of the doubt always goes to the customer. If they're really unhappy about something, please let me know. But I'm going to tell you, if you don't hear from me, the default choice is to give them a refund because you're never going to make them more uh, uh, less uh, more upset by giving them a full refund. They may not be happy, but if you offer a half refund or a you know kind of mess them around like that, yeah, they, they I, a good rule of thumb is do what Amazon would do. What would Amazon do? You know, Amazon will give you a refund, or they'll they'll give you a full return, and uh, you know that's uh, I found out Amazon usually does that because I'm a big Amazon buyer and Amazon seller. And I always watch what does Amazon do? What do these third party guys do? Sometimes I buy stuff from people just to see what they do. How do they have a 15,000 uh, customer feedback reviews and it's a hundred percent. When you see somebody like that, they're doing something right. It's worth going and buying a product from them just to see what they do. What is their, you know, what is their tricks to doing that? Um, so Sometimes I'll buy a product and, you know, if they have something that I want, I'll buy it just to see how they handle it. And, uh, and I know people do that to us too, because right now we got a hundred percent positive customer feedback and it's been hard getting that. It's been hard keeping it, but um, you know, we work really hard. If we start having anything go down immediately, I get my team together and we say, okay, guys, something's happening here. We've got to get on top of this and get these numbers back up. And so that we focus on that and we get, and we have we've got them back up.
So how are you driving all of this traffic to your listings? I mean, besides natural organic searches and, and good keywords, you know, what, what should people be focusing on to drive traffic? Because without the traffic, you don't have sales. That's right. Uh, and there's a, it used to be a lot of real emphasis on traffic. You know, uh, I, and one time I, when I first got started, I did set up a Facebook page and started advertising on Facebook. And I did get a big bump in sales. Uh, but I started the uh, last few years, I've seen that kind of fizzle out. Uh, just Facebook doesn't seem to be as effective anymore. Uh, you know, I've done Google ads. I didn't really get any lift from that. Uh, I've tried all these other things. And you know what? It boils down to Amazon's doing the work for you. You pay them a commission. They're doing that for you. All you've got to do is get a good product and a good listing up there and give good customer service. That's, uh, in my opinion, most, for most products, that's probably 75 to 80% of the game amazon's doing it for you they're getting smarter about it every day you don't have to go set up your own website and drive traffic you can maybe to kind of get it moving a little bit but if you have something that people want and they go in and they type and search for it and you have those keywords in your in your listing uh amazon's job is to make sure that your product gets stuck out in front of them and they do all the google advertising for you uh you know they you, you can't do a better job than what Amazon's going to do. So I, don't, I really have gotten away from uh, investing a lot of resources in Facebook and all of these other platforms because I'm just not really seeing it. Now, that doesn't mean it wouldn't work for a, you know, a, a very small niche product that you want to get right in front of people. And we are doing videos. We make sure we're doing A-plus content and we're doing videos in our ads on Amazon now. Uh, I think that kind of helps just build a brand. Uh, but I, I wouldn't worry too much about this traffic driving thing. Amazon does a lot of that for you already. Okay. What is a, you say a plus content. What is that? What does that mean? Uh, that's if you have a registered brand, Amazon allows you to uh, kind of upgrade your listings to where you can have embedded videos uh, in, in the listing. You can have uh, much, uh, a big photo spread in the listing. It's more than just the standard uh, Amazon uh, listing configuration. You have that standard configuration, but it also, they give you like, a, like about a, a two-page web page uh, size uh, uh, listing where you can add lots of photos and additional copy, and you can add a video. So that does help kind of, kind of makes your, 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 uh, your seller store look a little more professional and it makes it a little more content rich for the buyer. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> What about the pay-per-click and the, the new things that Amazon always comes out with that you have to pay extra for to help drive traffic? Is that important? Uh, sometimes. Uh, I like when I start a new product, I might do pay-per-click. But I, I, I spend a lot of time wrestling with pay-per-click. Right now, I've got a girl on, uh, I found on uh, Upwork to do my pay-per-click for me because I found it very time consuming. I've tried these gimmicks, these third party pay-per-click apps and I found they were no help whatsoever. They just made it worse. Uh, pay-per-click can very rapidly eat up all of your profit. So you have to decide, is this a, is it a, is it a viable business model to run pay-per-click all the time? Uh, or is it good to maybe just get it started to get your product ranking? You know, I kind of, I use it maybe to get, sometimes I don't use pay-per-click at all. And I still have products that take off and sell. Uh, so, I'm really not doing too much pay-per-click unless I find a need to. If I see sales beginning to drop off because of competition, you know, I got competitors gaining on me, I may run a temporary pay-per-click campaign, but I keep my eye on it, make sure that it's not uh, getting out of hand. I'm seeing pay-per-click as, um, you know, the costs are going up a lot. Uh, it, it's, it used to be 20, 30 cents pay-per-click. Now it's not unusual to see a dollar, two dollars, four dollars per click. I mean, you, you, if you're, that's just really not sustainable unless you have something that has a massive profit margin. And uh, I, if your product, once you get the product ranking and you have the right keywords and the right content there, um, I don't really think you should need to use pay-per-click, uh, you know, ongoing, not really. So, yeah. so you, you mentioned, you mentioned that when you test products, uh, sometimes you'll just buy a couple and then put them up and see if they have any traction. So uh -huh. do you, do you, cause I know you're on the FBA model. So does that mean that you also 
start on the FBA model by sending them into Amazon when you're testing or do you just do the fulfilled by seller? I, I find things sell better when they're FBA. I, I, I think uh, if, it, if somebody has the option of free shipping and free two-day shipping, uh, I think they're more willing to hit the buy button. And if they look at it and they go, oh, boy, this is going to take five days to get here. And, you know, I don't know if the seller's any good. If it's prime, I think people are about twice as likely to buy it, to hit the buy button than if they're not. Uh, and also, Amazon gives you a better ranking, you know, if you're prime. Now, we do have seller fulfilled prime we've started using here in the last year and a half, but that has a limited reach. You know, I can only ship things to people that I can reach out to geographically. I, I can transport the product within two days. You know, I can get pretty far in two days. Mm -hmm. You can be surprised, but I can't get to the East Coast. Uh, right. So uh, I'm actually looking at selling, setting up another fulfillment center uh, over in, uh, in the East, uh, in the city in the East where we could get the seller fulfilled product out faster. Uh, okay. and cover almost the entire United States. Uh, okay. But that's just because it's a, it's a hazmat product and I can't do it FDA. And does that um, mean that you would, you would use Amazon's fulfillment center or you would resell? No, it would be, it would be seller fulfilled prime. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll do it out of one facility in the west, western part of the United States and one location in the eastern part of the United States. And with UPS and FedEx ground, uh, I can almost get everything uh, you know, to, to like 90% of the population in the United States within two days, you know, because from Atlanta, Georgia, I can ship from New York City, FedEx Brown in two days, all the way down to Miami, Florida in two days. Wow. Uh, that's just how long FedEx, FedEx can get it there in two days. So can, uh, so can the UPS, just standard ground. Now, there's a new shipping service uh, that FedEx has launched out that's really going to change things here. Uh, it's called FedEx One Rate. They're going, it's kind of like priority mail. They supply the boxes and everything about the same size as priority mail, but they're getting them nationwide, including Alaska and Hawaii, uh, in two days. I mean, so this is a big game changer for us. Uh, now we're able to, I can now reach with these small parcels, I can reach the entire United States, sell it for Phil Prime, and, uh, and compete just as good as it's an Amazon FBA item. So that's a big game changer coming up for all of us here. Yeah. That's uh, so that's something that you need to be aware of. And that can move you away a little bit from FBA. You still have the same competitive advantage as, uh, as using FBA, really, as far as ranking goes. They treat you like your FBA, but you're, selling, you're shipping it yourself. And there are some advantages to doing that. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, with so much success, obviously, with um, so many resources that you come across every single day, it's obvious that you know what you're doing. And so I'm sure you have competition somewhere out there. I'm sure somebody's watching Eric's tracks. So how do you keep track of your competition or how do you think they're keeping track of you? Well, the best thing to do is periodically go on to Amazon and search, uh, search for uh, your product using keywords that you think it would be. Uh, and see what pops up. You should be coming up number one. If you're not coming up organically number one, or at least on the first page, you need to be looking, well, what do I got to do to get moved up on the list here? And if you have competitors that are gaining, that are closing in on you, uh, you need to go take a look at them and see what, see what they're doing. Go buy a product from them, see what their customer service looks like. Um, find out what are they, are they do using fake reviews? Uh, it's a lot of them do, you know, so, um, you know, you got to do some surveillance and see what the competition is doing. That's the way I do it. I just go look for it, see where my product is ranking. And, you know, if you're ranked number five uh, on that search term, um, and uh, the, the, that means four people organically are in front of you. And then the question is, why are they, why are they there in front of you? Is your, is, do you have better photos? Can you make your photos better? Uh, can, you know, do you have a better uh, – I, I like to go look at their product and, re, and look at their reviews and see what the complaints are. What do the low reviews say? Well, if it says that, uh, you know, it uh, didn't look like what I expected it to be in the photos, well, then I make sure that my product fixes that problem. You know, or if it says it failed after two years or it says the batteries were corroded when I got it, you know, then I'll put in my listing guaranteed batteries won't be corroded. You know, if that's something, whatever the issue is that's big with that product. I put I I will address that in my listing because somebody's looking at these two saying which one do I buy? This one says it's got a problem. This guy says he knows about the problem and he guarantees he won't have that problem. So those are the things I look for and I try to give uh, I try to tune up my listing to make sure that it's uh, 
you know, it's optimized for, you know, that, that marketplace wherever I'm selling it. And I try to make sure I try to get more, you know, more reviews. If they're not doing any kind of customer service, then I, you know, I, up, I throttle up on my customer service, you know, whatever, wherever I see the competitive advantage of the opening, that's where I'll go. If it's about price, then I try to see if I can get it to them cheaper. You know, uh, I'll try to find ways to cut the price. And there's lots of ways you'd be surprised that you can cut costs, especially when you're buying more and more stuff, you know, going over to Alibaba and, and posting, um, you know, just regularly posting a request for proposals, RFQs, re requests for quotes, and getting all of these vendors, you know, bidding on your product, uh, you can oftentimes find vendors that'll give you a better deal. Um, and uh, that, that can cut your costs. And now you can pass that cost on to your customer and undercut your competitors. You've got to constantly be doing that. Mm -hmm. So I do spend a lot of time doing that. We're always looking for new suppliers. All right, Eric. Well, I think that you've provided so much valuable information, especially to um, newbies, people that want to start out selling on Amazon. And so I'm going to ask you these last two questions to close out the podcast. And mm -hmm. one, I want to find out what have been unexpected benefits um, or advantages that you have gained that maybe you had no clue would show up during this journey? Well, my, my lifestyle, my, my stress is much lower. Uh, I have more time to spend with my kids. Like today, I just bring my kids to work, you know. They're out of school, so it's nice. I put them down in the break room. They've got some, some video games to play and some snacks, and I can come up here and do this podcast. And when I'm done, I'll go back down there and hang out with my kids. Sometimes I bring my dog in, you know, let her run around the warehouse. So uh, I could never do that before. I have a lot of freedom. Uh, that's really nice. If I want to take off and go to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico or something for the, the week and rent a condo down there, uh, I do it, you know. And um, so uh, before I always was too worried about money to ever do something like that. So I'm able to travel. I'm able to do a lot of things that I was never able to do before. So it's been a real big uh, life changer. And you know, for me, the stress levels are way lower and I really enjoy doing it more. So I enjoy my team of guys that are here working with me. Um, you know, they're, they're really proud to be on board too, you know, with this company and, and being a part of it. Uh, so they like it too. And they're learning a lot about Amazon and I wouldn't be surprised. Some of my guys go out and start their own businesses one day and I'll mentor them up and get them there. You know, mm -hmm. they trust me and I trust them. And uh, so, you know, we, uh, that really helps out a lot as well. And um, what do you think the starting budget should be? Because maybe somebody starting out is thinking, well, I don't have the money he has now. You know, what, what amount did he start with to help me get going? Yeah, geez, I started with pretty much zero. I mean, I, the, my inventory was junk laying around in my garage. And, uh, it, you know, it just, uh, I actually started making money selling junk out of garage sales and thrift stores. I think I made about uh, $28,000 selling junk. Uh, in about seven months on eBay, believe it or not. And, um, you know, I had to, I, I used some of that to, to pay my electric bill and for food. Uh, but, um, you know, I just kept rolling that back in and the, and the operating capital continued to grow. I've never had to borrow any. So I, I would say whatever you can afford, you know, um, you're obviously going to need to be prepared to take some risk. You need to be able to lose a little bit of money. So, uh, you know, don't, I don't really think of it as, as losing money. I think of it as, uh, I mean, people go and spend $70,000 a year for an education in college. Uh, and so to me, this is a learning curve, uh, a learning experience. And I'm getting hands-on training that nobody else is getting. And I can't, what I know, I could never learn in YouTube videos. It's not out there. Right. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just jumping in. And as you begin to learn how to do things, you know, you, your confidence kind of picks up. I had a very small budget. I'd say I probably started with maybe 1500 bucks uh, or less. I had, a, I did borrow a little bit of money from my retirement. Um, at some point, I think I borrowed about four or five grand, but I only did that when I knew that, that this business was going to be probably successful. Uh, you, you know, and then I kind of did that, but I, you know, quickly made the money back. So, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't really have any big, uh, big giant nest egg to work off of to get started. I pretty much started with zero. And lastly, I want you to share what role or value trademarks played in this process. Well, the big thing about trademarks is that it, it gives you a huge competitive advantage on Amazon. Uh, 
if, if you come into a, a you know a, a product category where that's not already saturated with trademark sellers and you can come in with a trademark well now you can you can brand your product and uh, and protect your product so that you know that's really important your product tends to maybe rank a little bit better you can do a plus content uh, if you, you can't do a plus content without a registered brand so you have to have a trademark for that and uh, you know if your competitors don't have that they're not going to have videos they're not going to have a plus content sitting there that looks you know that features your product in a much better light than what theirs does so that's a competitive advantage for selling on Amazon uh, and uh, you know uh, and it helps protect your brand helps you uh, chase off the uh, you know the, the listing hijackers a lot easier and things like that too Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, Eric. Well, I want to thank you so much for sharing so much about your journey on Amazon. And um, if there's anything else you want to share, then please feel free. Uh, well, I, I think the, the main thing is as you go to start up your business, uh, you know, it's uh, keep in mind that your privacy is very important. When you go, if somebody would have told me what what would you, what'd you do different uh, if you would have known this. Well, for one, I wouldn't have registered any brands using my, I wouldn't have put my actual uh, address, phone number, personal information that they ask for. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing when you go to register, when you go to get your business license uh, with the state. Uh, be careful. Don't put your real phone number down there. Get yourself a sideline number. Get yourself a P.O. box. Get some way to maintain your anonymity because all of that information is sent out into the public domain and you the, the first uh, product I registered with you, the first brand name, right away I started getting these bills in the mail that look exactly like that came from the, uh, the uh, trade office. And they were bills, you know, that said, hey, we've got your product registered. You just owe this uh, minor $350 uh, to, to finish it up, you know, and, and they look very real. So it's, uh, this, you're targeted by scammers very rapidly. So protect your, your personal information. Do not put your phone number on anything. Go get some kind of a, a sideline number or a, a, some kind of a phone number that is not linked to anything whatsoever because that phone number is used all over the internet uh, to track you, to find you. So very important. And I recommend you uh, stress that to all of your clients as well the day they go to fill out that application and give it to you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And, um, and that's it. I hope everyone enjoyed okay. the podcast.